SmashCon is the biggest anime convention in Australia, and we are very honored to be working with them this year to give an announcement. One of the main guests coming out to SmashCon 2024 this year. Well, hello, 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 and welcome back to Gateway to Anime. How are you all? What's going on? We are the podcast where we try and throw open the gates to anime, whether you're a new fan or returning fan or an old grizzled fan like us. Ever wanted to get into anime but didn't know where to start? We are the podcast for you, but we're also here to keep all of you current fans up to date with all the happenings of the anime world. We're a busy lot here at Gateway to Anime. I am Sam, your host. Charlie, how are you going? Good, good. I'm excited to chat about some really cool things that are happening locally for Sydney anime fans as well, which we'll get onto in a second. So I'm excited to kind of talk about the anime community and fandom in Australia. That's what this episode's sort of going to be focused around and some cool news coming up. Graham, how are you, my friend? Good, good. I'm a foreigner, so I'll be talking about foreign affairs. <laughs> foreign anime affairs. So... All? All the anime? All things not outside of Japan? Yes. So, yes. <laughs> it's a big job for you. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> it's quite a job. Just all of anime, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, today, we are here in collaboration with SmashCon. SmashCon is a convention in Australia, the biggest anime convention in Australia, and we are very honored to be working with them this year to give an announcement for the very convention itself. And that is one of the main guests coming out to SmashCon 2024 this year. We at Gateway to Anime are absolutely honored to announce that Yu Hayashi is coming out to SmashCon 2024. So, who is Yu Hayashi, if you aren't aware? For those of you who are, get excited. It's happening. Incredible time. But Yu Hayashi, an extraordinarily talented seiyu, voice actor, for those of you who are not aware of that word, but also a musician, was got into the game very, very young. In fact, his first ever job was at the age of 12, where he did a lot of Japanese dubs for English movies and TV shows. But one of the most famous of which is Kevin in Home Alone. He is the Japanese voice of Macaulay Culkin in the Home Alone series in Japan. Absolutely wild. Also, Michael from E.T. And we could, we could get into that forever. I'm not going to get too bogged down because, of course, we're here to talk about anime. We are gateway to anime. But just another little one here. This is anime adjacent. His earliest job was as a 12-year-old where he played a young boy in Otomo Katsuhiro's experimental movie called Memories in 1995. I mean, this man's career has been absolutely extraordinary. Also a very, very, very prominent musician, but we'll get to all that later. So firstly, what we want to do is just talk about some of the anime shows that we have huge affinities with that Yu Hayashi has been in. So, Graham... Why don't you start off with some of your favorite Yu Hayashi roles? The first thing I sort of come to think of on his roles is Mob Psycho. He played um, Shiyoshi en uh, Ed Edano, who is like the leader. Of, what's the gang? Black Vinegar. Black Vinegar. Black Vinegar is like the school delinquent bullies that, you know, give Mob a hard time. But, you know, through all the adventures, he ends up sort of... I don't want to say reforms, but he, he learns a lesson. He learns life lessons. He ends up joining the body, the body club, which Mob is a part of and sort of like changes his sort of worldview and stuff. He's, yeah, he's interesting, interesting character. Yeah, the Body Improvement Club are also one of the greatest clubs in yeah, anime history. Yeah, just Let's pure real positivity. Here. Absolutely. I, want to, I, I really think that if I could have that club in my life, I would be doing a lot better. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think it would be... Very positive change. <laughs> yeah. huh. Just unwavering support 24-7. Oh, so good. Mixed in with a 10-kilometer run. That's it. All day, every day. Yeah. 
Charlie, what is one of your favourite Yu Hayashi? Well, let's talk about one of the most recent ones, which has been in Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. Yes. We, of course, up on the screen here, we have Takumo Ino, who yes. I think. Oh, I didn't know we had this. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, there you go. A visual. Yeah, yeah. A character with the band aid right there for those yep. of you who are yep. watching. Those of you who aren't, you left to just uh, use your imagination. And we've got Ino here with the hat. Um, he's a hat man. He's a hat man. So, one of my favourite. I think highly underrated characters in Jujutsu Kaisen and one of the most relatable characters I think in any anime show because he's extremely powerful but he kind of like has a bit of self-doubt. He just kind of wants to get the job done. He really admires Nanami, who doesn't. True. Um, I think he's, you know, he's a grade two sorcerer but Nanami mentions he should be grade one. He's got this kind of like chill, friendly, happy-go-lucky disposition and it's just like pretty like, oh, shit. I also think he could grow up to be a sleepy teacher so I I think there's a lot of potential. Hey, watch out. Watch a lot of potential. But yeah, I think that this it's interesting because it's not one of the, you know, you think of Jujutsu Kaisen and it's just a stacked show for characters. You know, you've oh. got your, some of the most famous characters of current, like modern anime. But um, literally this is another example about how that show doesn't really have bad characters. And yeah. he's great in it. It's a great vocal performance. It's a very fun character. And yeah, it's one of my favourites of his for sure. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to speak about one of my absolute favorite shows of all time when i found out that we were going to be able to announce yu hayashi for smash con 2024 i just got so excited because we're gonna he, be here for a while aren't you're we? gonna be all listening to this quick, for quick a little bit get it out no he is the voice of tanaka in haiku one of my top five shows of all time full stop not just animes favorite shows of all time and tanaka one of my absolute favorite characters and the vocal performance is elite so tanaka is a classic kind of he's up here by the way the bald they all called him baldy is one of his nicknames <laughs> he's it's interesting with tanaka because like in haikyuu a lot of the characters could be considered to be like conventional right so he's very much the angry character you know what i mean like think bakugo yeah kind of vibes from i mean i'm not exactly the same but the very just the overtly angry character all the time always yelling always like quick to anger passionate passionate character but what I love about Yu Hayashi's performance as Tanaka and how well it's written, of course, is how nuanced and three-dimensional he is as a character. But he's also the wing spiker. So he's like the side spiker, not the main ace, but he's sort of being positioned to take over from Asahi after he retires. For those of you who aren't aware of Haikyuu and what that's all about, high school volleyball team, he is the heart and soul of that team. He is incredibly passionate and like, you know, famously pulls off his shirt and swings it around a lot whenever he's excited about things, but also is incredibly defensive and protective of his younger teammates. So he really is the heart and soul of that team. But one of my favorite ever episodes, this is a slight spoiler, but I won't I won't get too deep into it, but one of my favorite ever episodes of Haikyuu ever is when Tanaka is in a game and they're targeting him because he's obviously a wing spiker. The blocker has just got him out and they're like, hey, we can get in this guy's head because he's obviously very passionate quick to anger that like we can mess with him and he's getting messed with he's he's playing badly he's getting blocked this guy's got his number he's messing him up and this is beautiful part where he basically goes into his own head and he sits there and he's like hey you know i used to think i was a genius as a kid i you know maybe some some part of me thinks i still am but i'm not the best at anything in this team i'm not a genius and sometimes maybe once every six months or so i just get really down about how average i am but then he has this moment where he's like, hey, man, he's like, you know, it's this beautiful bit where he's, you know, climbing a, a mountain in, in his own brain and while in the middle of the game. And he's sort of like, hey, he stops himself. He's like, do you really have any time to look down like this? And then he just like screams for the ball. And it's not even about him making the shot or whatever. It's just the fact that he calls for the ball again. And it's just, that's why Haikyuu is so good. It's these little things in there, which is actually like more than just the game. It's really about life. And just his performance, when he screams left to get the ball past him on the left, it's mm. just like ugh, amazing vocal performance. I'm tearing um, up. That what it's, a good. It's so good. It's honestly <laughs> so like it's so good. Oh, it's one of my favorite. Anyway, take I'm going to stop now because I'm going to talk about We're Haikyuu for the next four hysterically. hours. So anyway, this is just why I got so excited because this man is an extraordinary voice actor. And Graham, don't hit me up with another one of his before I just talk about Haikyuu for four hours. Yeah, this is probably like looking at the board. This is probably like his biggest role, I mm. would think, mm. just on like sheer popularity, like. Of this anime, not in this room, mm. but 
as Sam will attest to. Not saying but anything, I guess, not saying anything. Because it's massive in Japan, right? Huge like, massive. in Japan. So he's also the voice of Majiro Sano, better known as Mikey from Tokyo Revengers. Yes. The only character I know by name from that show, I've never watched it, is Mikey. Mikey. So yeah. it is he's hugely yeah, popular. It's the most cap- he is the most popular character for sure. By far. Yeah. So M- Mikey is, he's ca- what do you call it? Not a protagonist, but uh, when there's two of them. Sort of a dragonist or dragonist. We made that word up. We made that word up. We made that word up. Dutragonist is not a word. Is it not? No. We we try like we fully have said it so many times on this podcast. <laughs> we make up a word. I think we did. Okay, look, I have found that word elsewhere, so I can't okay, claim. Okay, as I long as it's elsewhere, I can't claim to have made it up. It doesn't. But exist. We might have. <laughs> But I've definitely read it online somewhere. Whether it was from it was the, the ramblings Reddit of a maniac Tumblr. on Reddit, like, yeah. I don't know. It's a YouTube <laughs> comment. Like, you know what? This is a great one. Dragon is yes. In my academic essay, uh, in this essay, I will argue, like, in your anyway. master's degree, like, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. they're like, did you just make up a fucking word? It's, like, it's my thesis. <laughs> yeah. So he's he's the leader of the Tokyo Manji Gang. That's sort of like he's the sort of the crux the story is built around because he's. Who the main character, who name I can't remember. Takemichi. Takemichi. With his time traveling escapades, he's the one who he's sort of trying to stop throughout time yes. to stop killing the girl, won't spoil anything else. But I think Mikey, out of probably everyone else, is probably the best thing about the show. He is a very fascinating character. Like he's ruthless and he's violent, but he's like, he's also dealing with a lot of trauma. Mm. And his way is expressing trauma is to try and build like a gang or like a community for outsiders to be a part of. That character and that performance is fantastic. It is, it is. And yeah, probably his most, I mean, he's got a lot of pretty good roles, but yeah. that's probably yeah. at the moment, probably in Japan would be his most famous. Yeah, I would probably so. be his most famous role. And Maybe. it's like, so unlike Jujutsu Kaisen, where there's just so many iconic characters, like I think, you know, how there's always one character from each anime. It's like Levi from Attack on Titan. Like Mikey yes. is like the Mikey. Levi yeah. that's, that's of exactly, Tokyo. That's exactly correct, yes. And people love him. Like there's a lot of fan art. People write fanfic about Mikey. All right. So another role that I am a massive fan of, and for those of you who do follow this podcast and have been with us for a while, if anyone listened to any of the shows through last year, You'll know that my favorite show of last year was Vinland Saga season two. Not only was it my favorite anime of last year, it was my favorite show of last year. Full stop. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. That was the show of last year. And a lot of that was due to this character that Yu Hayashi played. And that is the character of Omar. So he's up there. He looks like a greaser. He might be in part of the Tokyo Manji gang in that photo there, but he's actually a Viking. So very different. Very different. But... Omar was the son of Ketil, and Ketil was like basically the owner of the farm in which Thorfinn found himself a slave on, right? And, you know, for which all the action took place. Very fascinating season. Obviously, you know, you can listen to any of the podcasts from last year of me talking about how much I love Vinland Saga. But Omar was, again, not unlike Tanaka, such a nuanced character because at first you hated him. Mm. He was a really sort of like slimy. He's like, you know, he's the rich boy. Right, he's the son of a farmer. Huge, like, and not only like in that period of time, being a being a, owning huge land, like a farmer in that, like, not just being not a farmer, but like owning a farm in those days, massive. Yes, huge. Like it. he was like was royal, essentially like royalty in a way of of Viking culture. Is Ketel. He's the first. He's the second son of the essentially landlord. Right, and the thing about Omar is that he starts off. He's unlike his brother, and his older brother is like a fierce, fierce Viking, like terrifying his name is Thorgil and he's absolutely like you know one of the most revered Viking warriors out there and his father was a revered Viking warrior and Omar he ain't that he ain't that he's skinny he's small he's a little as you can see there kind of a great hair though great hair but by far, actually, Thorgil's got better hair. Thorgil's, oh, does he? he got, does he's he got the something on that side as well, like, man. There's some real good hair in that show. There are some great hair, great uh, salads. Vikings have good hair. It's top salads in that show, absolutely. Nice. But the best thing about this performance is that like, he has the most growth, I think. I mean, Thorfinn has extraordinary growth. That's probably not true. But like outside of Thorfinn's entire journey of season two, Omar's journey is just extraordinary because he actually is the reason that that whole, I won't spoil too many plot points, but he's the reason that shit goes down is because he's brash, he's easily manipulated because he's so insecure about not being his brother or his father and being weak and not being a good fighter, but he wants to prove himself on the battlefield and he wants to be a a glorious warrior, but he's just, he just ain't got that dog in him, you know? He ain't got it. And at the end of the second season, he plays a major part and he's, journey and the vocal performance that Yu Hayashi gives in one of the sort of emotional climaxes of the whole second season is just 
exquisite. If you haven't seen Vinland Saga season two or season one, go and watch it and then get into season two because his performance as Omar is absolutely unbelievable. Huge fan. into this show. Oh, it's just so good. It's just so good. <laughs> no, but anyway, and I'll stop again because honestly, you're two, rambling, Sam. You're two rambling. of my favorite shows of all time. And I'm yeah, like, he's, yeah. this guy is the voice of them. So this is very exciting. I can't wait to meet him at Smash. Hopefully get to meet him at Smash. Put that out there. I'd love to shake his hand. Put it out there. <laughs> I'll say also another very famous role is Michizo Tachihara from Bungo Stray Dogs. Um, mm. Won't get into what his character's like. There's actually a bit of a spoiler in there. So watch it because his character kind of goes through a couple of journeys, a bit of a couple of twists in there. But um, one of the main characters from that show as well. Very popular show. But also just to add to this, not only is Yu Hayashi an extraordinary voice actor, also a musician. All right in a band called Screen Mode. So the group consists of him as the vocalist and the guitarist Masatomo Ota. So obviously they do a lot of really interesting work, but they've also been the theme songs of quite a few anime. Oh, no way. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. So their song Rough Diamonds is the season three, the second ending theme of Kuruko no Basket. What else do we have here? They've, okay, they are the opening theme for season two of Food Wars. Then they've also got a song called Reason Living, which is the second opening theme for season two of Bungo Stray Dogs. Yeah, I mean, he's just been all over this stuff. He's Prolific. like, yeah, I mean, the man is extraordinary talented. He has a YouTube channel you can check out as well. He's got quite a few subscribers. He sings and plays a lot of songs on that channel. Also eats, eats food and travels, like really, really good fun. So anyway, you Hayashi, SmashCon 2024, one of the many guests, but get down there. Go see him, line up, get his autograph, hear him speak. I mean, really exciting times. A huge thank you to Smash for letting us make this amazing yeah, announcement. Yeah, amazing. Such a great guest. When we were told, I was like, oh, my God, big guest. Uh, I really appreciate <laughs> that Smash take the opportunity to get Japanese artists in to meet the Absolutely. Japanese voice actors because um, we'll talk about this in a second, but when it comes to like, you know, uh, Australian conventions and like the bigger ones like Supernova, Comic-Con that are kind of run by big companies, they tend to get um, like American voice actors into the dub voice actors, which, which is cool. It's cool. It's freaking awesome. But like, it's, it's really great that Smash provides the opportunity to meet some of these like old people who originated the voices, which yes. is so cool. There's going to be heaps more announcements coming out. So keep an eye on Smash's social media. Buy a ticket they sold out last year. So it'll probably sell out again this year. And there'll be other channels uh, announcing other guests. So yeah, they usually have a pretty good lineup. Oh, absolutely. And we're friends of Smash. Like we've done event coverage for them a couple of times now and it's a, one of the best run conventions that I've ever personally been to. So all volunteer based, these guys just work so hard to bring the convention culture to Australia and it's a hardworking team. It's such a great community and as with all conventions, I find it's just a very welcoming, safe space for people who just want to celebrate what their interests are. And, you know, you can find anything to do with Japanese culture there. So it's not just anime in particular. It is mostly anime and manga, but there is a lot of things like um, there's a lot of idol stuff happening. Tons there's, of stuff. there's so many things. So jump on the website, have a look, check out our video if you want to see what the vibe is like. There you go. Here's the vibe. Um, but all I say is that I've always I mean, blown use this away. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> this is I'm great. Always... <laughs> For those of you who aren't watching this podcast, uh, we have a video playing of us, sort of smash cut reel of us being at Smash. Yeah. Smash cut, smash right? playing behind us. I was, oh, I'm always so blown away by the cosplayers and people and everyone just there who's just having a good time and just so freaking happy to be there. So if you are a fan of anime and you are arming and ahhing about going to convention, I just highly recommend it. It's such a big part of anime fandom. Out of yes. everything, like anime conventions are a huge thing. And yeah, Smash are probably the best at it in Australia. I would say. Look, this is a good segue into talking about Smash, which will then lead us into a broader conversation about anime conventions and our experience with them throughout our anime journey, so to speak. But I'll just, you know, you've done a very good job of explaining what Smash is, but I'll just do a little bit of a uh, talk, so some talking points off, which I took off their website. So, you know, a bit more, uh, if you're not sure about what it is, I mean, Charlotte did a very good job of explaining it, but so SmashCon is the Sydney Manga and Anime Festival. It's a Japanese pop culture convention devoted to artists, creators, and fans alike. The convention is a driving force in the Australian anime and manga community. The con attracts thousands of visitors each year and has something for everyone. With high caliber international guests, as we just spoke about, and a litany of fun-filled activities like cosplay panels, Smash's famous artist market, which we always hit and do a lot yeah, of interviews with. Of Love that area. That Fantastic. There's a growing gaming sector. Big whole a bunch of PCs set up in a whole region of the of the convention. Unique panels, workshops, 
bands playing. I mean, I remember Charlie rushing to hear <laughs> Cruel Angel Thesis yeah. when it dropped. I think we were like in the cover. middle of filming. Yeah, Charlie's like, like ah! this girl just fucking smashed it. Crushed like she was it. really good. I honestly knocked over like probably <laughs> several children to like get to the front. <laughs> uh, and it was great. So congratulations to you, that girl. Whoever that, yes, whoever you were, you were fantastic. I hope you're there this year because I'll be Back at the front. <laughs> Standing on children's necks to get them. Like, <laughs> but yes, as Charlie mentioned, it is Smash is not for profit. It's completely volunteer run. And as they say on the website, Smash is a convention run by fans for fans, which is such a great thing about SmashCon. It started in 2007 and it was initially at the Roundhouse Theatre at UNSW, where I've seen quite a few bands. That has a capacity of 2,200 people. Now we're at the ICC. With a little old capacity of eleven to thirteen thousand. Yeah, you know, so just a just a little bit bigger. So it's it's come a long way. It's and huge. It's extraordinary it's what massive, they've done. Massive. So Smash Convention, absolutely fantastic. Get down to it if you can. We are going to be there. We're going to be in a booth this year. Oh, we stepping up. Oh, another we, big announcement. Another big announcement. We will be at SmashCon in a booth. We'll be doing our event coverage as we always do, but we're going to have a little base of operations, of course. We'll be selling merch. You can buy T-shirts. We may even have stickers and whatnot. Don't hold me to that, but we'll definitely have T-shirts. And we'll be, you know, having a chat, hang out, come and say yeah, hi. Come and if we chat. do, if you see us walking around, we'll be wearing big shirts with our logo bla- emblazoned upon it. If you do see us, come up and say hi because we're going to be doing the event coverage. You might get in our video. And it's just a great time. But let's talk a bit more about conventions because, look, I've got to say, has not actually been part of my anime journey. Okay, wasn't a convention guy. I think it was your first convention was Smash, wasn't it? Well, when we did Supernova was my first. Supernova was your first one. That was my first In, ever like two years ago, anime yeah. convention two years ago. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't. It was not part of my journey. So as a result, I'm going to defer to you two oh, yeah. on this one because, like I said, I love conventions now, and not that I probably wouldn't have when I was younger, but it just wasn't. This wasn't my thing, for whatever reason. Didn't get into it. I've talked about my anime fandom journey and convention journey where I was actually volunteer for a thing called YCON, which was a Perth run, Panic was the name of the company. It was the first anime convention in Western Australia. I think it actually started before Smash. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I, yeah, definitely would have because I was working at conventions in 2007, 2008, and it was like the fifth year by that point. Wow. So, yeah, just a big, that, that started out of UWA. A lot of um these like conventions start from anime university clubs. And that's how Panic started and that's how they kind of got in. They ended up, honestly, it was at the convention centre. It was a really similar to Smash in terms it was run by fans for fans, Mm -hmm. all volunteer-based. Such a fun time. I had such an amazing time meeting like-minded people. And for someone like me who didn't have many friends who were super into anime, it was incredible to get involved and actually work for it. It was just like my first introduction to kind of being like an actual fan and not just sitting in your room watching Naruto. So it was great. Uh, and I really loved that. We all, they also had international guests and things like that. Smaller than Smash. Smash is huge. But I have a lot of respect for the guys that run that. They've folded, unfortunately. I think um, in the end it just came down to that, uh, you know, conventions like Comic-Con and Supernova just became popular and they started coming down to Australia. So I remember my first, like, Supernova was in 2009, I want to say. And it was at the Claremont Showgrounds. Hey. And it was – because Supernova is not just anime. It's actually just pop culture. So there's yeah. a bunch of different sort acts. Of nerd kind of culture, thing. if you will. Yeah, but there's still cosplay competitions and things like that. So they do take things from anime conventions and do bring it there because a cosplay com- competition is like a, a convention's like staple. Same with panels, same with all that kind of stuff. So it's the best. I, I love going to conventions. They're, it's the most fun ever. And, like, I've – Worn some absolute trash cosplay. <laughs> I once dressed as Nana um, from Nana, and it was most like it was just like me in a black T-shirt that said her band name. It's low and effort. someone got it, and it was the best. I was like, finally, someone gets my niche. It's not even niche. It just was like not that good <laughs> cosplay. I did I did a K-On cosplay, which was mildly better. Um, so you know, we've all. We all have dark pasts. <laughs> <laughs> we've all but done things we regret. All yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, but. I love conventions. I think they're freaking fantastic. And honestly, I think we're saying they're always kind of the same. You know what you're going to get. They're always kind of the same. And it's like the same group of people and everyone's just having a good time. Yeah. Yeah, expressing your love for stuff is really good. Yeah. Uh, my first convention was... Pool. How do I give away how old I am? Okay, it was 20 years ago. 
and it was uh, Glasgow Comic Con. And you think of a convention, you think sprawling, like convention center, millions of booths. That won't it. <laughs> <laughs> Pop culture in Scotland is like, back when I was growing up, wasn't really a thing. Like you could like stuff, but it always felt like it was going to be like a secret thing. Yeah, right. Because that's not the culture I come from. So Glasgow Comic Con was probably about the size of this room. <laughs> but spread across like two floors. Yep. <laughs> but it was really cool because that was like my first sort of like, oh, there are people that like the same stuff I do and we're all in this one room. That's really cool. But it was a terrible little tiny convention. But then I've been to the opposite side of things. So I think the biggest one I ever did was Emerald City Con in Seattle. It's an American convention, so it's big yeah, and bombastic. I think the Americans do conventions probably better than anyone else because that's where all the end of the industry is. I think back then when I went to it, like John Wick was coming out. So there's this giant John Wick display and had Keanu Reeves suits. And it's, you know, a lot of money chucked into these things. Mm. I feel like the rest of the world, we don't really do that type of thing. Like Smash Con's really good, but the Americans just have another level for this type of thing. Everything's extra in America. Yeah. Smash Con's great because I, it feels like anime conventions weren't a th thing when i was growing up like mm. i couldn't tell you if there was one in the uk i know there's one in london now which More is massive general pop culture yeah just chuck it all under one roof you got yeah, a guy yeah. dressed as captain kirk and then there's superman over there and stuff yeah. like i feel like the anime like Naruto, one yeah. as the popularity rises throughout the world and you get anime conventions that can you know fill a room fill a convention center which is really cool to see and smash con is you know the biggest in australia yeah and it's great like anime nerds have a place to go it's we had so much fun last year it was a great time i used to be like an anime convention fan like i went didn't go to any of them but i used to like stalk event coverage on youtube and like awesome. i was like really obsessed with going to anime expo which is ax which is the big one in america in la right oh yes yes and they i remember more jealous in my life because they would always have the biggest guests like japanese and english voice actors and like everyone there they also did a thing called ax idol where people would like sing theme songs and then they want, if you won AX Idol, you got like a record contract to be like a dub artist of like oh, a, wow. and then oh, wow. then they did like AX Idol with voice actors and they did it live on stage and the voice actors would judge like dubbing. And then people who won that got like a career. And I remember I was like 16, just being like, how do I save up so I can go compete in like my entire, <laughs> my career path? Being like, what if I won like AX Final Idol? Goes West, you coming off a boat with a bindle? <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I've met some really cool voice. I met Laura Bailey. I met Travis mm. Willingham. I met Christopher Sabat. I met a bunch of people. I met um, at Supernova. I met the guy from Police Academy that makes all the sound effects. Oh wow, that was pretty cool. Not anime related, just was pretty cool. Just a cool guy. <laughs> uh, <to be. laughs> yeah, anime conventions really fun. If you are on the fence about going, and even if you just go by, I think a lot of people go by themselves because you just walk around. There's so much to do. You very don't need friendly, to go with friends. Friendly. Go chat to people, just go and like chat to an artist, get some support your local artists, go watch some cosplay Great comps. Comedy. Like, honestly, yeah. get dressed up, just let your bloody nerd flag fly. So, yeah. So, anyone on the fence, I really recommend for anime fans. I think it's a really special, special part of the community, which is convention going. And also, there is, but like, before you do go, make sure you look up, you know, some etiquette rules, things like that. Like, some, if you want to take a picture of someone in a cosplay, make sure you ask permission. Mm -hmm. Obviously, consent in that way, chatting to people and, you know, make, and just being, you know, generally. It's, it's good It's good to kind of check what is expected of people. But in general, I think if you treat everyone with respect, you'll have a really great time. 100%. Good rule for life, in fact. No, yeah. just conventions. Um, <laughs> Take everything else of is free. Everything everything else free yeah. Yeah. Free for all. <laughs> yeah, Goddamn cool. Papa Rizzo. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. It has been such a privilege for us to announce you, Hayashi, as a guest for SmashCon 2024. Really exciting times. We will be there. Come say hi. Go and see you, Hayashi, and go to SmashCon 2024. We are Gateway to Anime. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. If you're a podcast listener, even if you aren't, head to Spotify and or Apple Podcasts. Give us a five-star review. Write a little thing if you want really really does help us and if you really like what we're doing you can find us on patreon where you will get extra special episodes you will also get behind the scenes footage and early releases of this podcast episodes so you can join for as little as a dollar fifty a month just a little bit does help us out massively though really appreciate it hey thank you all so much smashcon 2024 it's been an absolute pleasure to partner with you guys we can't wait for it in july so Get your tickets. We'll see you all then. Graham, Charlie, thanks. And we'll see you soon.